Hello, Pfeffer. How was your week? Hi. Good. <laughs> A lot of Death Stranding. <laughs> so you are Death Stranding. I am Death Stranding. Oh. I am now Hideo Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you say so, I think you're going crazy. I, I think that's the is. What's his name? Mad. Nicholas. Oh no. Oh. Oh, Nicholas Winding Refn. Yes, I almost called him Christopher again. <laughs> My friend Chris, you know. <laughs> Refn. Hotman. Well. Welcome to the next episode of VGXL. My name is Daniel, aka Games. Joining me again is Pfeffer from the channel Pfeffer on Hi. Twitch. And uh, yeah, it's, we're going to be talking about stuff today. I'm excited. Yay, uh, stop. Yeah, we were supposed to do a, 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 what you call it? We are supposed to do an emergency episode last week. And I just said, you know what? I don't feel like doing anything. So I didn't, like a loser. But, uh, but, <laughs> but we're back. If you're not already following, please follow on Twitter at VGXL Podcast. Or you can follow me at GamesXLife, uh, Video Games X Life, uh, if you want to talk to me directly. Um, and uh, yeah, where can, and where can we find you, Pfeffer? Twitch.tv slash Pfeffer. Or Twitter.com slash Pfeffer Plays. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I, something that I keep forgetting, you can now rate the podcast on Spotify, and if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, you can rate it through there. Please, if, you know, if you're enjoying yourself, give us five stars. That'll help me out tremendously and give me some clout and make it seem like my podcast is bigger than what it is. <laughs> but, um, no, but seriously, if you, if you have the time, I try to put questions sometimes, so if you can interact and engage, it, which I, just want the, I just would like to see how it comes up on my end when people engage with it. So if you're listening to this on Spotify, um and you have time if you're not driving or if you're home definitely uh uh take a look and see if you can uh rate rate the podcast or see the questions i might post uh for for the episode if i i might forget after i record just so if it's not there then my bad but um you could screw at me on twitter or something or in the discord if you're in the discord um which i need to create or open up the vgxl podcast discord for people to come scream at me there like uh, legato mm -hmm. he can he loves screaming at me um <laughs> uh but yeah crazy week um you know if you haven't been living under a rock it seems you know you might already know that uh well even before all that we're, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself how you doing pfeffer <laughs> what, i'm good what I'm you been good. playing what you been playing uh this past week oh my god okay so i got i mean i was last playing which i'm probably going to continue tomorrow um shovel night Oh, that's right. You've been recommending Shovel Knight to me forever. Forever. And I finally, you finally told me, hey, play this game. And I'm like, okay. And I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. I was supposed to save it for stream, but I think I'm on the last boss right now. And then you speed run it later. <laughs> speed run it later right? <gasps> or try with another character because they have several characters. Oh, that's right. You can change the characters. Yes, so the that... music is so good, worth it. It's totally worth it to do another uh, playthrough. Do they have um what? I was, well, I was do just they have, like different, like you know how like Mario Two, you have the different characters, like ones are heavier. Yeah, I believe so. I I believe they're different. Oh, traits. Okay. Yeah, I so believe like like that'll that's what gives it the replay value. Like it's not just a skin. I think it's like legit. Like the character plays different. Um, think awesome. think like that that Super Mario special where you can play like with Zelda or, or or Samus, and they all have they still have their their classic moves, but it's just Mario Part One. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's mm -hmm. something like oh, that. Fair. So it's like it's okay. it'll be the same game, but the character will play like itself. And then um, I was gonna say, and if you ever feel like playing Blaster Master, which I still recommend the original, you know zero one, you know zero and zero two. Um, I believe in zero one. You can play with Shovel Knight, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, they put Shovel Knight in that, and he plays like himself. So it's the whole oh, game. Cool. Yeah, and you can play as Shovel Knight, and he has his move set and everything. Oh, very cool. So, okay. yeah, see, yeah, Shovel Knight's appeared in a bunch of stuff because he was big. When, when the Wii U was hot, Shovel Knight was, was when it came out, I believe, 2014, if I'm not mistaken. 
um something like that it's been out for quite a bit now and mm-hmm. uh um i know that that i i if, if, is shovel knight in 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 smash i can't remember now um if shovel knight is in smash i don't remember uh it might just be a assist trophy um but anyway um I can't remember if he is. I see he's. Oh, I was in the Sif's trophy, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, I mean, he makes an appearance. I don't, you can't play as him in, in yeah. that. Okay, that's interesting. But, um, but yeah, so Shovel Knight, yeah, I, like I said, I didn't get as far as you did, but that I knew, I know the game is very fun and it's, like I said, it's right up your alley and I know you like games like that. Mm hmm. Platforming and music. Great music. Great Not music. Yeah, it's just perfect, perfect, perfect mix. I mean, heck, I might even with that same um, functionality, uh, might go to what was it, Ducktales? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Ducktales is not as action packed, but it's very, it's still fun. You can play the new version, the three, the more three D one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. and and yeah, it's he has, but he has an actual pogo stick that you can bounce on the ground. That's like the difference. That's what I like that they took inspiration from these games, but they're not quite the same you know what i mean so it's like while he can pogo on with his shovel on monsters and bosses um Mm -hmm. in ducktales it's a little it's more uh i think pogo sticking is the main way to attack in Mm -hmm. ducktales and that game is pretty in in depth like it's pretty like cap that's one of capcom's best for the nes and i'm sure the music on there is great i know that that moon level is the moon level has some of the best music (laughs) yep that was i beat that game it's one of the first nes games i ever finished like to the end i know i haven't played any of that so yeah that's cool and you'll see the like the diamonds and all that that pop up from that's all from ducktales that you see in shovel knight Mm -hmm. so yeah definitely some cool stuff there so awesome and then aside from um shovel knight i was very very <laughs> very hooked on Dutch Stranding. <laughs> it's so good. It is. <laughs> Stranding is just art. It's beautiful art. I thoroughly enjoyed everything from all the the music placement from the characters, all the the NPCs you meet and everything like that. Everything was just like perfect. I really enjoyed it thoroughly. No, oh, you're, you're absolutely right. No, it's like, and it's funny because I, I wanted to, when I saw the new stuff for the director's cut, I was like, damn, I, I could totally play that game again. And, you know, it came out and it was just like, I already knew it took me 66 hours to beat it the first time. And I was just <laughs> like, I don't think I can. And then I, I turned it on um, and saw my save file there. But it was like, yo, I had no idea what I did, what I was up to. And, you know, you have to relearn all that stuff. So, you, I also got into Death Stranding this past uh, couple of weeks. <laughs> got you hooked. And yeah, super hooked. Like the the gameplay, I gotta say, is very addicting in that game. Like, it, I, and I want to say, like, for you know, I mean, most people listening to it either don't care about it or probably or either have played it or just don't care about it. But what I will mm-hmm. say about that game is that it definitely is a walking simulator, and that is not a jab at it. That is not an insult. That's what Kojima set out to make. He set out to make a walking slash delivery simulator, and it very much is that, you know, with survival elements and mm-hmm. some stealth and, you know, and then the super crazy narrative on top of all of that. You know, it really is a walking simulator because you literally have to hold the triggers to balance yourself. You have to weight manage. You have to, you know, have the right tools and you have to be careful with the rain because the rain deteriorates your stuff. And, you know, yeah. you have to have like, you know, uh, uh, ropes and ladders to go up hills and come down mountains. And, you know, like they really make it like, you know, it's a traversal on foot traversal sim and i all the packages or anything like that packages if you fall in the river because you lose all your stamina there goes all your packages there they go down the river and you gotta go and get them when they land the shore (laughs) exactly (laughs) crazy and yeah there's there's a lot so like you know i'm glad i'm glad you 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 got into it. like i figured like you like once you got into the groove like you would enjoy it i never thought you would you would have spent how long how long it took you to finish it like it the, the 65 hours i think it said 65 so you were like one hour under what i spent on that game yeah 
yeah. I played the crap out of that damn game, though. Yeah, no, the game, it's it's addicting because then it's like you, you unlock things. When you do the deliveries, you unlock stuff to make your life easier. So you can yeah. blast through that game and try your best to, to not really do any other side of deliveries. But it's like the more it, the game rewards you for everything you do. So if you put in the tons of work to get somewhere far, you're probably going to come back with an item that's going to make your life that much easier. Yes, exactly exactly and then if, if you continue to to um level up your your friendship with each of the different porters then you level up what they give you and that's it makes it that much easier when you're fighting the big bosses and stuff on there exactly and their their whole online mechanic is really cool too so it's like you'll you'll be going somewhere and you see items being made by by different players, you know, in your game, and it's cool because you see their 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 um, PSN ID when the last time they were signed on, um, things like that. I think you know it's true. I was reading like about their when me and you were trying to get connected to each other because it's very hard. Like they made it very esoteric to like connect with friends, and mm -hmm. so it's like it, you know that's that that I would say is like the kind of like more missed opportunity or or. or P missed potential unused potential of that system because it's like how cool would it be if you needed metals and you asked somebody to deliver metals to you so that you could finish building a a bridge too or i mean you can ask for people to upgrade stuff but like the delivery system of getting a, a supply drop you know like it would be cool if there was like better things and you know to to get supply drop to you and more mm -hmm. and more incentive to get people to do it because you know it's something i realized i barely saw in all that time i barely saw people requesting stuff and there were a lot of people playing because i was yeah. getting likes on everything so there were people playing it's just nobody uses the delivery the the supply request system too often oh, yeah no i only seen it once i finally connected with you i had seen only one person Yep. And it was just like that same day that one person was, I saw one person requesting something. And Look at that. Never, like, I hadn't seen anything like that before. And I would love a game like that, that, that really copied even the aesthetic. I mean, because I didn't even mind the aesthetic, but, like, that did that, but was more in-depth city builder. Because it would be cool if you could, like, really, like, build out, like, a whole-ass city by doing deliveries, getting materials, and just build out, like, you know, even if it was a pre-rendered, like, city where, like, you know, because those highways are obviously supposed to be there, right? So when you build highways, it's not like you can put a highway wherever you want. But it would be cool if there were, like, more buildings you could you could build out and, like, rebuild the world, you know? That would be cool. Instead of just traversal, like, make it where you can build, like, factories or, you know, something like that. Like, you know, like a, like the actual factory games that, that have that, that are like that, like the 3D ones. That's true. Even, um... Like on along those paths of the highways or so, like you can you can sit there and like make a home home for yourself. Right. And start building around that. That would be cool. I would be cool, especially yeah. like kind of. No, oh, no, not really. But I was gonna say kind of like how it ends. You have somewhere to go, but no, because then when you play post game, you're it's pre ending, and it mm -hmm. seems like things mm -hmm. were changing towards the end i don't want to say too much because i think it's a game yeah. worth playing through like the performances i gotta say for a game that's so weird so esoteric and so out there and then there's a strange gameplay uh a loop where you deliver you're literally it's literally a uh, 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 fedex you know ups amazon simulator where you pick up packages you load them on your truck and you take them to people and you know and it's funny because it came out that game came out literally a, a month and a half before covid broke out and like a couple months before total lockdown where everyone's isolated. And that's literally what the game is about. People being <laughs> isolated from a threat on the outside that made it hard to travel where delivery people were the most important people. And that's what the game is about, that delivery people are the most important. It's such a weird premise, but it works so well because the, the gameplay loop was just addictive. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if you listen to this, Monkey, but you know how we like our survival addicting games. I think that's a game, and it's on PC, that... You might actually enjoy. It does have little scary moments, but nothing I don't... I feel like it's so out there that it's not even that scary. It's more like, what am I looking at? What is this? You know, it's like eerie and a little spooky, but it's not scary. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd call it scary. Even the scary, the like the monsters, whatever, like those can be kind of um, 
walked around and maneuvered and stuff like that. Right. So that's not even a big deal. And even the, the like you said, the scary parts in the game are like a, a quick thing. Right. It's more stress <laughs> than scariness. <laughs> you can look away for a second. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's <laughs> something that you can like lower if you want. And, you know, you could just. And there's ways to get around it. So it's like, yeah. you know, but like I said, the, just the whole delivery, taking your time and delivering things. And, and like I said, you could even figure out how to get away from the, what the, what's called the BTs, where they're the main enemies, the main, you know, uh, mystical, I guess, you know, enemies in the game. Um, but yeah, great game. I know it's like this is super late on that. But, you know, I figured this is a game that we both actually kind of got into the last couple of weeks, even though I had beat it back in 2019. Um, you know, I know. Fan. If you see, if you have a PlayStation Five, I highly suggest getting the you know the next gen version of it. If you have a PC, I know the director's cut is coming to PC apparently in a couple of months or something mm-hmm. like that in a couple of weeks. So you know, definitely worth checking out because Death Stranding is an experience. It's not the most action packed game. It has a lot of action, but it's not you know if you do, if you don't mind a walking sim, which I bet you that's you ride motorcycles and cars, so it's not all walking. But if you like you know little tedium games like that, you know where you're you know you're you're kind of working work. like survival yeah. game. If you like a survive, if you like survival gameplay loops, this is kind of this has its own very unique survival loop in it. Even down to the even down to the menus when you're checking your supplies, you have to craft your supplies. You have to pay attention to your supplies wearing out because you've been out in the rain with them. Exactly, and, and the rain the deteriorates shoes, everything. Your shoes wear out, and you have to make sure you have replacement shoes, and you have to pack it. Exactly. I was like, many things and i i i overpack a lot and in real life in the game i I was called it panic panic packing or panic stacking (laughs) Oh yeah, because all my stuff i got blown up at one point so all my packages flew and mind you i had a bunch of uh i made a bunch of uh weapons to shoot the bts with because i didn't know where i was going and i just knew i had to go and fight some stuff and then it just a bomb blows up and all the packages go flying and i was just pressing triangle to then so i'm going like that and I was stacking them super fast. He was yelling at me saying, you're panic stacking. Stop panic stacking. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I need my stuff. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, man. It was a bit stressful at times, like I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> like I said. All the performances are so good. Yeah. It's beyond, like, it, it plays after if you, if, if you love good movies, <laughs> Death Stranding is an amazing movie. You, obviously, you have to play through it. Right. Once the, the cutscenes hit, they're so good. Yeah, it gets so. really interesting, you know. And some, some of the, some not every person acting in it was like super awesome, but for the most part, the stars that they had in there, or mm-hmm. even their replacement, because they, there was, I didn't know that they use a lot. They used like the likenesses of people, but changed the. It wasn't them, so it's not yeah. Guillermo del Toro. But even though the voice actor sounds exactly like him, so we, I pretty much count that as that being Guillermo del Toro. Exactly. Like you know the cameos. And yeah, that. like his understudy played that role just like him. So, <laughs> so it feels like you really were traveling. You know, uh, dealing with him. You know. Um, Tommy Earl Jenkins, you know, did a really good job. Um, and then you have Mads, Mads Mikkelsen in there, and he did a really good job. Like, his role, he played, like, a really small part throughout the game, but then towards the end, where it all comes together, like, I was like, wow, he killed it. Like, you know, I believed that whole moment. Like, I believed it. Like, you know, like he was living that right there. Mm-hmm. You know? And, you know, then you have Norman Reedus the fetus, and... The only thing is that Kojima writes the main character very light, and I feel like he—that's his style now. Like he doesn't like a main character to talk too much because he did that in Metal Gear, and now he did that in, in this game, like where he had the main character is very light with the words. That was my only problem. Like I would, I would have liked to see more performance out of Norman Reedus. You know, see what he got. See if you know, it was just Daryl. It really just was well, Daryl. He, he did talk a lot more. I mean, a lot. And he had his little <laughs> speech. Yeah. And he had more words at the end, and I feel like it was more of just the, the, the traveling, and in in a sense, just him kind of growing through all of that, right? Because of all the crap that he's gone through, and all just kind of everything that kind of with with everything, all the the, the shit hitting the fan, mm-hmm. and and whatnot. So 
again, we don't want to be spoilery or anything. So we're, we're keeping it really vague right now. And um, I'd absolutely recommend people to play it. Absolutely. No, it's definitely worth the, the experience. If you like games like that, it's the big exactly. open world survival style games. If you like those types of games and they get you hooked, Death Stranding is worth the check. But yeah, moving on. Um, other games that I've been playing this week. Um, uh, actually, after Di- Death Stranding, I played some Dying Light 2. Um, so far, so good. Um, you know, it's it's I still have to get into it, but uh, you know, if it's tight, it feels it kind of reminds me of like Halo. How Halo took forever to come out, but the game is the controls are super tight and the game feels good to play. Story so far is okay. Nothing nothing to write home about just yet. But the little the little missions I've been doing and killing zombies feels nice. Like those things so far so good. So I uh, you know I'll probably give more in depth once I finish that game up. And then uh, Sifu came out uh, actually officially comes out tomorrow. Today's the seventh. Officially comes out tomorrow the eighth. But I I paid the extra ten bucks just to play it a day early. And so again so far so good. Um, um, and now that I'm on I'm on the topic of Sifu just. Uh, you know, it, it, what sucks, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but if you pay attention right now, the controversy, I feel bad for Slow Clap because they made, you know, uh, Absolver, which is like a little fighting one-on-one fighter game that came out a few years ago. It was decent. It was okay. You know, it was a, 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 a inter- interesting indie game. You know, you don't really hear too much about it, but people who liked it really enjoyed it. And I was excited for this. It was, it's just there. I'm, what I'm excited most for this generation is that a lot of companies came out with their first game on the PS4 and PC the you know the last few years and now they're second now that they've learned and launched their first game got better funding got you know more staff i'm sure more we're gonna start seeing those second and third games of from from these people coming out you mm-hmm. know and and i'm excited for that so i was excited for c4 and it sucks because not only did you have the playstation screwed them over with their with their early release so people were not getting their game unlocked you know slow cop themselves said this is on playstation side we're waiting for them to respond and so people were like oh why did i pay for this what about you know because they're not they're not thinking about it. they just think this has to be the developer's fault so that that made me a little yeah. bit that's sad that oh it sucks yeah yeah, yeah. Re- i'm sorry you cut off say that again no, I'm just saying that sucks because they they just want to point the finger at someone because they're just angry. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have and then you have um the fanboys that now they're using any ammunition to to drum up controversy and that kind of sucks to me because a lot of people are on Twitter and a lot of gamers love to talk shit there and a lot of the most vocal gamers are there so it's like word spreads and now there's this whole thing that the game is two hours long. Yes, that is true. The, if you are good at the game and you master it, you can get through it in two hours or less. You know, mm-hmm. and there's already like a a, a a video on YouTube showing that somebody finishing it in two hours. Again, it's a game that's easy to pick up, you know, hard to master. And I've already been through it, getting to the first level because the whole premise of the game is, you, you know, you, it's a Chinese martial arts Um beat them up so it takes it takes obvious inspiration from movies like the raid and even has a hallway scene like the raid um right in the beginning of the game and but the more you die the older you get and you know if so if you're you have a kill counter so if your kill counter hits seven and you die that means seven years passes in your age until and then you know every every decade of your age um uh uh, you have this 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 medallion these these four med- five four or five medallions that are on each other. They break every time you break into a new decade of your life. So, you know, if you die four times in your twenties, that's fine. If as long as the kill counter is one year at a time. As soon as you hit your thirties, one breaks, and you know, and then you know, until you hit your seventies. And if you die in your seventies, then the next one you have one more chance. Like you know, you don't. Um, and that's how the game works. So, huh? It's an interesting concept. Yeah, it's really cool. So I beat the first stage, but I was 68 years old when I beat the first stage. So <laughs> one more death, I, I'm, I'm 76. And then after, the, and, and you can start the second stage, but you only start the second stage and the year that you started it, at the age that you started it. So if you start the, if you start the second stage at 68 years old, you, that's <laughs> it. You can't be younger than that. You know, so that means that you have to be perfect till the end of the game, which, again, you have to master that game. So... You know, so it's hard. It's hard. I spent two hours today trying to trying to be as young as possible to get to the next stage. I couldn't do it. Like I, you know, I was, and then and then it has roguelike elements. So 
as you're fighting your way through it, you get experience points. You can upgrade these skills, but you have to hit, you have to do it five times before those moves become permanent. You know, so again, you have to play the game a lot to get permanent moves to master it. And then uh, obviously once you unlock all the moves, you can beat it quick and there's shortcuts. So each level gets yeah. shortened with the shortcuts. So mm -hmm. it's bullshit. Yeah. So it's like people are already coming out shitting on the game and it's like, you know, that sucks. It's like, stop it. Hopefully, I think the game will sell well. Oh, people are saying forty dollars for a two hour game. It's like, no, fuck you. It's it's yes, it's two hours if you mastered the game. Yeah, you know? And people are like, Oh, but it's like oh Nintendo games, it's artificial I'm like, Well, that's fine. As long as mastering it is fun, I don't see a problem with that. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did watch you play some of that earlier and and uh, it looks a little <laughs> a little intensive at times. <laughs> but um I might I might have to give it a try and see if I can get good. I think it's fun. I think you'll enjoy it because just because it, it feels good. It's like, hop, 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 and then you have the little noises. Well, if you're streaming it, you won't hear it through your headphones. But, you know, um, it has, like, noises coming out of the controller and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, you know, it's cool. So far, I think it's worth the 40 bucks because it's fun. It's like the Returnal. Returnal, you know, same thing. The game is only six stages long, but it's hard to master, and, and it's going to take a while. You're going to put tons of hours before you finish the game. I think... That's fine. That that old strategy back in the day was necessary because of the limitations at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, you know, again, that's okay if you actually spend the time on the game and, in, and put hours into it. It's all about yeah. ratio to entertainment to time. And I think, you know, forty. if you spend 10 hours on the game, that's $4 an hour, you know, you pay to enjoy that game. That's not the worst, you know... I don't think that's the worst price in the world. And hopefully there'll be more added to it later. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not, you know. But, again, it's a small indie studio. And it sucks that these fanboys are coming after because it's a PlayStation console exclusive. It's also on PC. But people are like, oh, if it's on Game Pass, I'll play it. I'm like, you know what? All right, fine. You know, and that's that's a huge problem. And that's going to lead into some of what we're going to talk about today. Um <laughs> But um, I think it's a huge problem uh, thinking like that. And this is what Game Pass has created, that when you have experimental indies come out now and something that wants to be a little bit different, break away. If it's not like a $15 game, now it's like, oh, I wait for Game Pass. If it's not on the service, I'm not going to play it. And it's just like, like, again, I hear you, but it's like that kind of sucks, you know? Um, exactly. Because I agree with that. It does suck. Yeah, because now now they have to they either, you know, hopefully they'll get sales. But if you know, if you if you're a smaller indie dev and, you know, your reviews aren't that crazy, sometimes that kill that can instantly kill your game, you know, and kill your you know, you may not even have money to b make another one. Again, I get like, you know, sometimes there's games that get don't get the best reviews, but they were interesting enough or sold enough for a sequel that killed it, that get that did that does it incredibly well. You know, sometimes you need that learning experience. And, yes, some games are not always going to be that great. But when they already come out the door with bad press, it's like, you know, and then it's, and then made up controversy. Like, oh, it's a two-hour game. That's a false narrative. You know, that yeah. sucks because now everyone just sees that. And it's like, oh, I'll wait for a sale or I'll wait for a game pass. And it's just like, you know, now what? hurting their sales on there because then people are just biased because of this. That's that's why I don't really care about reviews, honestly. No, a hundred percent. I don't really pay attention to them too much anymore because everybody's everybody's obviously between Twitter and the reviewers, everybody's got some crap to say about something, and then people see all the negative stuff instead of the positive stuff. The well, depending on how good or bad it is, obviously, but people take that to the extreme and they're like, oh, but look, this person said this is really bad, and then. And like you said, I'll wait for a sale. I'll wait till it comes to Game Pass in a few years or whatever like that. But then that just sucks for the, the developer. Because then they worked all this time and to put, put all that effort in there for people to just shit on it and keep it moving. Exactly. And it's a good game. I heard the, the punches. Like, that's one thing that we, we usually like. Yes. The hitting. It feels good. I, I heard it while I was watching you. And like, you hear the punches and the slaps and the pipe hit. You hear the sounds. It's so satisfying. I was sitting there watching you play for a little bit, and it was so satisfying. So we seeing you go pa 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 pa, and I'm like, 
oh, that sounded great. Exactly. <laughs> <I like that. laughs> exactly. No, you're hundred percent. It's a fun yeah. game. It's I think it's worth the money. They put I'm sure mm -hmm. they put a lot of effort into that combat system and, and developing a nice challenging game. So I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, like give them their props. Like like, you know, That's shitting right. on a game because oh it's to, it's it's forty dollars. It's like um they charge forty dollars for four hour DLC for for destiny and shit you know what i mean like back in the day it's mm -hmm. like there's worse there's worse examples out there that a game that 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 takes time and effort to learn you know i and people are like, oh 10 hours for 40 dollars that's not i'm like are you kidding me that you know it's like 60 a lot of some some six 10 hour experience are 60 dollars so it's mm -hmm. like what are you talking about oh 10 hours for four like 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 in the entitled broke gamers you know and that's that's the <laughs> shit that sucks it's like yo you have on one hand you have people like oh i want shorter games but then you have people who are like oh but games too short i want to spend money on it so it's like get your broke ass out of here go you know it's like like damned, you know, they're damned if you do damned if you don't exactly and then on top of that the specific people who are all like yay triple a want to like hate on indies just just because of the fact that it's indie like, exactly oh, Indies don't don't or don't give you any quality. They don't do this. They don't do that. But then you're gonna spend sixty bucks on what Spyro, right? Or or the next or Call of Duty or whatever. Or like you know, Call of Duty, you're gonna spend ninety bucks on that because you want all the bells and trinkets in there. Yeah, it's or ridiculous. It, it's around the same shit for twenty million times a day. Like, no, <laughs> I know exactly. That's that's what breaks my heart about. It. It's like, damn. It's like, like. I think they're going to make their money. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, oh, you know, like poor, you know, I think they're going to make their money. It's just, you know, it sucks to see that that potential sales and stuff like that are all just being destroyed by, by fanboys creating these false narratives. Not even the devel developer. It's, 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 developers are, are, I mean, excuse me, the, the critics are loving it right now. It's getting good reviews. And that is what I'm happy about. That's getting mm -hmm. rave reviews. You know, people are enjoying it. But the whole, like you know, difficulty aspect is coming into play. I'm like, it's not that difficult. It's not Dark Souls level of, like, frustrating, no. You know, even 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 uh, uh, Returnal wasn't, like, difficult. It's one of those games where it's, like, like Halo almost, where the reason why Halo feels so good to play is because when you die in that game or, you, you know, by somebody, is because it feels fair. It's because you made a mistake. You know, uh -huh. it's because you didn't do, you know, you didn't do the right move. You didn't throw the grenade at the right time or you didn't jump at the right yeah. time. Like, it doesn't feel cheap. So when you're fighting a bunch of bad guys and you get hit, it's because you're not dodging. You're not, you know, you're not doing the moves correctly. You're not, you know, it's that muscle memory is not there. So that, it to me, is 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 a huge plus in that it's like you know it's not it's okay for it to be difficult because it's a game about learning and getting better just like the souls games that those games are not long they're not but they're only long because of their difficulty once you master you can i think you can beat dark souls in like an hour or less i'm not even sure what's the quickest speed run in that but speed runners in in, in c4 are going to be crazy and so what i bet you someone beats that game in like you know 30 minutes soon enough and i think that'll be fine once they have all the shortcuts and moves and, and they know exactly where to gun for i'm sure you can even bypass one or two fights you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you know it's like like i said that's the part that that uh that that sucks that you have this great game and everyone's either it's too hard or it's too short and it's just like all these phony ass gamers be out yo elden ring i swear people the the hate that's gonna come from that i'm like i want to see what that's gonna be that's only what like two weeks away you know because now i think we get like no oh, yeah. what's what's today's the seventh so we get something next week and then and then uh uh we get horizon next friday and elden ring the following week so uh, yeah, so it was Dying Light last week, Seafood this week, you know, uh, uh, Horizon, and then Elden Ring. And I'm probably missing a couple other games or whatnot, but mm -hmm. but yeah, it'd be like that sometimes, you know. So good luck to them. Hopefully, the good reviews will get people buying it, and hopefully, you know, word of mouth will get people buying it because that game is really fun. Um, you said you might try it out this week. Are you gonna stream it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stream it. I'll give it a try. I'll let everybody see how crappy I play. Uh, that's fine. Because <laughs> it's all about getting good. I think you'll enjoy that part. But it I'll is. I'll be in the fight still old. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like, damn it. <laughs> I messed up again. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, I can't wait. 
in other news, freaking the one and only the best streaming service out there, Google Stadia, is being reported that it's slowly but surely getting shut down. Um, I think they're going to like... I'm only reporting on this because, you know, if you've listened to the podcast this whole time, you know that I was trying to give a stadium away for like a month um, that nobody was responding to. Even friends that listen to this were just like, I don't want that shit. Um, <laughs> it's finally going. It's finally going. It seems to be going out of business or they're finally killing it in a way where I think they're still going to be adding games here and there. Probably whatever contractual obligations are left, but they're going to be like moving it to apparently to like um like partnership deals with a with a generalized streaming service, so I think it's gonna be going to be called like Google Stream ser- Streams or something like that, and you know Pel- Peloton bikes. You know if you want to play a game on you know through the internet while riding a, a bike at the gym, that Google might be powering that, and that's how they're gonna work. You know they're, that's how they're gonna s- use that technology, and you know to get to, for other things. So you know. Uh, and the end of a uh, obvious, <laughs> uh, I think it was an <laughs> obvious end of an era <laughs> for this stupid ass service. I mean, we were kind of waiting for that to happen since they were giving all the controllers since away. I got five of them super easy. <laughs> what was it? Having a YouTube um, subscription or YouTube so? TV. If you were a YouTube TV subscriber, which I was doing a free trial for it, uh, not a free trial. <laughs> I did a, I wanted the new Google Chromecast. And if you got, if you signed up for a one month, you got a free one or something like that. And it's normally $50 and it was going to be like 60 bucks mm-hmm. for the service. I'm like, you know what? I'll, it's like I'm buying it and getting this, you know, I'm paying for that and getting a free month of, of thing oh, yeah. or three months, something like that. We had a couple of months of it and it was okay. Just like any other TV service, just okay. You have some channels and I don't watch TV like that. It didn't feel worth paying $65 every single month. I'm like, I'm not paying again. I wanted my mm-hmm. free thing. And then, well, the first clue was Google stated didn't support their new Chromecast. Like it literally works off the Chromecast. <laughs> you made a new one and it doesn't support the new one. I'm like that's that was one. They closed down mm-hmm. all their studios, and then they were mm-hmm. giving it away with no limitation to if you had Google TV, um, mm-hmm. you can apply for it. I had we we use YouTube at, with a family account, so on all five accounts that I has under that, I was able to get five stadiums. That's what I was trying to give yeah. them away, to, and nobody wanted it. Uh, well, nobody wanted it. We had, <laughs> had them piling up. Yeah, we it even just, it, to, uh, Games's parents' house, and they brought it back. I know, right? No. Unknowingly. No, but it was just it's so ironic that I'm like, I left it there. I left it there. And my mother's like, like my, the kids come back from over there. And I'm like, why is this back here? <laughs> it's like the mask when he throws the mask out the window and it just... In just, home, daddy. It just comes back. Oh, man. Um, But yeah, so that's happening. And then and then the, the last thing... um. You know, I, I waited to talk about this. Is is the whole Sony buying Bungie thing? So, um, so yeah, so that was big news a few days ago. They finally announced um, that they're you know they they've been working with Bungie for so long. They have similar visions, and so they bought them. Bungie's gonna stay um, independent, make their own games while helping Sony develop some free to not I, let me not say free to play some games as a service games, and it's interesting like. I don't know what to expect from that because we already, um, so the guy, um, Adam Conover, I think his name is from Adam Rooms Everything. Mm -hmm. He comes out and he says that the, that Microsoft buying Activision is bad because they can use Call of Duty to undercut uh, Game Pass mixed with Call of Duty and other big Activision titles to undercut the competition by offering some of their biggest games for 10 bucks a month, something that Sony cannot compete with. And at first I was like, you know, he has a good point, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you got all the people like, oh, he's fear mongering, blah, blah, blah. All the ponies were like, he's full of shit. He doesn't know what he's talking about, whatever. And after some some careful thinking, it's like, this is what I have to say about that. So, in my opinion, while he's not wrong that, yes, Microsoft can leverage those games to undercut the competition who, who also can't... Uh, who cannot compete? Sony cannot afford to make a day and date service today. They can't afford that. What they can afford, though, is legacy games. You know, backward compatibility and mm-hmm. and things that came out a while ago. Fine. I know PS Now is supposed to be an answer to that, but apparently, hopefully, if if they use Sony's um, patent or you know Sony the patent that Sony 
made from Cerny's discovery that they were he's able to do something with the processor to allow that. So if he can if they can figure out a way to at least copy the backward compatibility part, that's already one thing. Two, they're coming out with ten live service games by twenty twenty six. That to me tells me fuck around money. They need fuck around money. They need money where if they're gonna come out with a day and day service, you know, Spartacus is supposed to be the answer to that. That the to survive this against Microsoft is let's come out with these games as a service. Let's see what sticks. That's why they're probably making 10 of them because they know not all of them are going to stick and you don't want to have to start over. <laughs> you know, the best case scenario, all of them stick. You know, worst case scenario, half of them. You know, I'm hoping, I think, you know, or yeah, like half of them stay around, you know, and or whatnot. So I think that's what they're building right now. I think that like the only way that this is bad is if Sony doesn't respond because then at the end of it goes, oh, Nintendo will be fine because they have Mario and Zelda. But look, Sony has Last of Us. They have God of War. They have, you know, Returnal. They, you know, they have a lot of stuff. They have their own, you know, uh, Ratchet and Clank. They have well-known titles, well-known IPs that they can they still have plenty of time to, to, to flesh those things out because people will buy those games. Plus, whatever else they've got in the works because games take many years to make. So, you know, Horizon's about to come out. And when you get the true next-gen versions of some of these games, they're going to sell like crazy. So I think that though that and someone's like, oh, they they they've been working on the on the bungee deal for a long time. Yeah, they have, but they have analysts, they have, you know, risk management, they have a lot of people, you know, with their ear to the ground who probably or when Microsoft bought Bethesda, because people are like, oh, that you know, uh uh he's talking about Activision in that. But when Microsoft bought Bethesda, I'm sure you know, you know, best case, and I'll, again, I'm making assumptions here, but I, I'd like to assume that they already had people thinking like, we have to be careful because this is probably not the last acquisition. And if they start getting big games like, you know, Elder Scrolls and, and stuff like that on their service, they're going to undercut us and we're going to be fucked. So what can we do to combat that? And I'm sure that's why the talks with Bungie probably started when that Bethesda deal or shortly after the Bethesda deal, they said, okay, what moves are we going to make? You know, exactly. So that's why I'm like, you know, again, if Sony stays the course, yes, that'll be bad for them and gaming. They're not going to dry out Sony. Uh, you know, I, I I think they're building up these live servers. I think the decision came from the Bethesda deal. And now that they bought Activision, I'm sure they went full steam ahead and say, OK, let's just buy Bungie because they who knows if they if that was just the plan was to work with Bungie. And they said, you know what? Fuck it. What? How much do you want? You know, can't just work directly with us. We'll pay you what you want. You know, which I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Bungie, uh, uh, Destiny won't leave Xbox, the platform, but I think it will eventually leave get Game Pass. You know, you want it, you got to fucking pay for it on Game uh pay for it directly outright. I could see that happening. But either way, people are like, oh, all they have is Bun uh, Destiny. Who cares about that? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you got to remember, they had a deal with NetEase from a couple of years ago, $100 million deal. I'm sure Sony bought that out. That was part of the buyout. That's why it was so high because they had to buy out the NetEase deal. They had to pay They had to pay developers to stay, $1.3 billion for developers to stay, you know? Yeah. So it's like the, the the golden handcuff, they're calling it. Um, I've been hearing that a lot, you know, uh, with uh, this guy, the golden parachute, leaving Activision. You know, I saw something called, like, the golden handshake, and now I had uh, uh, this is the golden handcuff. You know, they're paying out like upwards of a million dollars for some of these uh, developers to stay on. So. And it, then, but with that, they're going to be, I mean, people, are, consumers don't, they just kind of see and take what they see. And then they just kind of start thinking on top of that. They're not really thinking on the back end, like, oh, this is Sony's uh, response to, to Microsoft. Like, no, again, I'm sure this has been in the works. Right. For, long time now so this is like you said even from the bethesda maybe this is their their response to the bethesda deal back then you know and then they're just kind of working on that and and um continuing on with that exactly um, that's what i'm saying yeah. like like they ha i'm like if they've been working on this for a while then they, it probably happened they were already making moves from the bethesda deal. when they saw that channel was like okay now things are different and people were like oh but what about when sony blocked blah, blah. i'm like yes that was bad i agree i never cared for that I never cared for that. I never cared for Sony blocking uh, Microsoft's games, uh, you know, games that came out on, on Xbox um, 
That's fair. I hated that. I hated that they did it with Destiny. I hate that they did it with Call of Duty. I don't like that. I know that's the name of the game. I never cared for it. But buying a publisher and using that to undercut the competition is different than making deals. That's a little bit different because Microsoft could have, with all the money they have, how come they're not making those same deals? They can make those deals too and say, hey, they did it with, with, with Tomb Raider. They, you know, they paid out the ass to have certain games on their, you know, on their console. They closed down a bunch of studios. So it's like they have to rebuild. There's a lot that they have to do to get these. They have to get these games out. So it's like I'm sure that, you know, they couldn't make the same deals that Sony is doing. Sony, I'm sure the 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 allure too is like we have the 117 million sales. We we you know our 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 data shows that you you know your game being exclusive here is gonna make x amount of dollars you know what i mean and we'll pay we'll make up the difference you know what i'm saying like be on our shit you know and and you're probably going to make this amount of money so i'm sure it's it's they probably not even like paying out that much to, to to keep things exclusive it's just like you know uh well i'm sure they, i mean they're paying something right because you yeah. know it's like why not make both you know whatever but you're right they were very cut sony was cutthroat I, you know, I, I, and I can admit that. And I, like I said, I never really cared for that, you know, but I don't like that Microsoft's trying to do it now. You know what I mean? I didn't like when Sony did I don't like that Microsoft's trying to do it. So, again, the, all the doom and gloom, of, oh, they're going to dry out Sony, Sony can't compete, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're right. If they stay the course, you're forgetting that they have time. They ain't shit. And what you said the other day that Game Pass needs to have? Spiral? What? <laughs> what did I say? Quality. Oh, quality. Yes, that's what Sony has with all of their their first uh all their games. Yes, absolutely. They have the freaking the mocap and everything. It's quality. Look at the stranding. That that game just blew my mind with I'm telling you with everything. Obviously a lot of it's co from Kojima's mind, but like if you they they helped him with all but, the But the graphics, yeah. The, the decima engine, everything. yeah. That's yeah, that's from Horizon, exactly. you know. Mm -hmm. They used the Horizon mm -hmm. engine, which means so they, they he was using Sony resources. So yes, even though he's not part of Sony, yeah. he was using Sony's yeah. resources to make that game. Their mocap technology yeah. is gorgeous. You know. And now imagine they take now they have Bungie. Give them the same resources. Exactly. Like, here, take your ideas, build us a game with live services. What's gonna come up there? I can't wait to see exactly how it's going to happen, <laughs> you know? And, and the thought that me, w w that we had off stream is that this is the thought that I, you know, this is my perception of everything. And, and like I said, I saw this on another article as well. Even before I read the article, I had this thought. I said, when you, when, so, when Microsoft buys out, a, bought up Bethesda, bought out Activision, you're thinking game pass. Right. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. know, for better, or for worse for Microsoft, you know, I'm sure they're happy that that's your thought game pass but when you hear sony buying out a company what are you thinking what the fuck are they gonna make together what resources what they they grow their studios organically and they grow them before they purchase them so they say hey make this game with us use our resources make this game they make a fire ass game and what then they buy them. Microsoft has barely done that. I think the only the only studio that they kind of followed that same trajectory was Obsidian. That Obsidian had already you know worked on Xbox games. You know they made uh, uh, Fallout uh, uh, New Vegas work better on the 360 than it did on PlayStation back then. And then I and then they made sure to pay them to have um, Outer Worlds on Game Pass day one uh, or whatnot. Um, before purchasing them, you know what I'm saying. And now they have Obsidian making like four different games. You have Avowed. You have. Um, we're still waiting on 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 a major update for for their Honey I Shrunk the Survival game. Um, huh? Grounded. Grounded. Yes. <laughs> and you know the next Outer Worlds, this Outer Worlds sequel, which I'm hoping is gonna be because Outer Worlds feels a little short and unfinished. And I think that's probably because they were like get this shit out for xbox but i think a seek you know obsidian with a sequel is going to be hopefully something great you know so they have some in-house studios 
you know and i think those are the ones that are going to make their their best some of their better games and that's what i want you know i want to see like dope games come to them but they don't have this you know they don't have as many studios as playstation has to deliver that quality so it's going to be time before we say wow that's a microsoft studios game damn you know what i mean like i don't think we're going to get that yeah. it's going to be a bit before we truly i mean this year you know fine but i'm talking about like a a, a first part studio that before that's released so starfield to me doesn't count yet until the you know whatever their next game is if there's a sequel to that or whatever you know like or elder scrolls 6 is being made on un mostly under microsoft's you know um uh supervision so again mm -hmm. like i feel like like once we get those games that started right around the buyout and then come out and come that those would be like microsoft you know like games but things that were in development for years nothing changed there because they got the buyout you know what i mean that's like if even if Sony bought them, it would be the same thing. You're, this is not under Sony's rule. This is under their old rule, and they're just finishing up. You know that whatever comes up next will be like you know. But again, Sony normally works with a developer, gives them resources, then say, okay, we're gonna buy you now. You know, look, you know, they bought they bought yeah. Insomniac after Spider Man. Spider Man was a fucking massive hit. Okay, we're gonna buy you now. You know. Yes with returnal and the same thing they did with naughty dog and the same thing you know like they and how smart yeah we're returnal like that's what i like from sony that's what you're not getting from from microsoft from microsoft and that's the problem and i feel mm -hmm. i feel like that's part of the problem Microsoft's buying and hoping for the best you know what i mean whereas like yeah. i feel like sony has in-house people that are you know that that are helping them grow and i'm not saying it's all perfect not every game has been amazing you know some game you know look at look even days gone uh got panned a little bit it wasn't the best game and you know even though i enjoyed days gone and there were some amazing moments the pacing has some issues and it did, and it apparently was buggy when it first dropped but still like you know uh that those it was still a very well done game and it holds up when with the frame rate unlocked those graphics still hold up pretty fucking great yeah really nice when i watched you play yeah it. like remember when when i showed you the, the the guy who plays deacon the real actor that plays yeah. him i'm like yo that's <laughs> him it doesn't even look that's different him. it barely looked different it barely looked different that's that's why i'm like that's what i'm talking about that's the type of shit you get you know you're getting fun gameplay yes there are some cookie cutter things within sony games i'll give you that but not everything is like that you do have you know even god of war is very different from something like the last of us or whatever but yes horizon days gone and and uh and last of us are, or, or and ghost of tsushima are very similar with some of their things but i feel like they're different enough that they still set apart you know what i mean they all they don't feel like the same game until you really analyze it whereas like when you play a fucking ubisoft game it feels like a fucking oh, ubisoft God. game thing but but even with like Horizon and Ghost of Tsushima, obviously the the story is what really sets them completely oh, apart. Is that like, true? There are some certain things like let's say grabbing uh, resources and whatnot, and and riding the horse or something. Might uh, between riding uh, um, Aloy's uh, metal dinosaur thing. I forgot what it is. I haven't played that in a while. But like I guess th there are similarities in that in the way that they do. You see them, but it is again it goes back to quality i don't know i just really enjoy their, their games because it's uh they just stand out story-wise so it's true and you and honestly you've been enjoying every single one that you've played you know what's another game that we forgot it was older but you played not that long ago in the last few years um because mm -hmm. we go back i think we're timing everything from the witcher so post witcher <laughs> pfeffer post witcher uh, um because you played god of war but you played um last of us <laughs> The original Last of Us. Oh, yeah, Last of Us. Wow, how could we forget? Yeah, so you start to play the sequel to that, which I, I think, again, I think you'll enjoy. Yeah. You play now, you play Death Stranding. So you're on that Sony wave. I get it. I, I need, get it. Yeah, I need to play Last of Us 2. I need to finish Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. I yeah. need to play Miles Morales. Uh, what else? Um, And probably, like, get into, like, Ratchet and Clank. I think you'll enjoy. And... Ratchet and I have um, to play, um horizon again because i played yeah. a while back i played for i played for a, a few hours and then i just kind of stopped i don't know what happened i mean i think I at this point you're probably better off just paying part two like like i said i i, I enjoyed part one but i feel to me it's kind of showing its age and and mm -hmm. um i don't know i think part two is just gonna build uh build up a lot more 
You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm hoping that that the gameplay is just gonna really set itself apart from part one. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's gonna be a lot of samey things like the way you fight monsters and you know yeah. we, I saw some of the gameplay videos. So yes, it looks a lot like there re- re- a lot of things are returning from part one. But I think taking down monsters is gonna feel a little more satisfying, a little bit better. Um, once it's, it's the sequel's coming out right around the corner. Now, if you don't, if the sequel comes and it goes, and you still haven't had time to even look at, then may, then maybe I would say yeah, maybe play through part one. You know, yeah. and 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 get through it or what or whatnot. If you don't feel like jumping into part two, but yeah, like I said, you see, there's there's just there really is that quality factor, and I feel like that's what Sony still has going for itself. Mm-hmm. That's why I say I I don't think they're gonna move away from that, but I think these ten in live service games that they're gonna be coming out with, like I said, it's fuck around money. That's what I'm. That's what I call it. Like that that will hopefully fund them being able to to say okay. You want day and date on the service? Here's day and date on the service. You know what I mean? You want PS6 to drop with with God of War 3 on it, even though they say they're not making another one, but, you know, let's just pretend or Horizon 3 is going to launch with it or whatever the fuck comes out. Day and date, you want those games? Well, here, because, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm thinking, like, if their live service, uh, assuming their live service games are successful, you mm-hmm. know, because if they're not, then that's it, you know, then they're not, but... You know, I think I think that's what they're going for. And it, ho- let's see what kind of different games. Everyone's like, oh, there's so many. Ten is a lot. But I'm like, it's a lot depending on, on what, how many games come out. Are we going to get a new looter shooter? Are we going to get Destiny 3 exclusive? Are we going to get uh, a Monster Hunter clone like Microsoft wants to make? Are we going to get um, a Genshin Impact type of game? You know, just an action gotcha game or whatever. You know, but, but again, they take that same level of quality that they put in their single player games. If you take that and finesse and really make a, a nice, you know, something that you can't get anywhere else. You know what I mean? Like like you where you know you if you're playing a Sony live service game that it's a good one. You know what I mean? That you know you're getting into like a really yeah. good one. You know, like that's what I'm hoping for. Not all of them. I don't think all ten of them will be like that. But I think we're gonna get some bangers out of that. Something that we may actually say, you know what, I'm gonna go play me some, you know, uh the division division steam. <laughs> 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 oh man you know some i don't know we'll see what happens you know get a, a death stranding battle royale yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> death stranding battle royale oh How many shit can you make with the bts a, a ratchet and clank uh a ratchet and <laughs> clank uh looter shooter you know ah. or a return or eternal looter shooter you know you lose all your loot if you fucking die oh, nah no, no. <laughs> imagine you know but Hey, you never know. They they could come out with uh with their an Overwatch clone. Like you never know what 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 could be coming. What 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 Bungie has cooking up. I feel like they saw what that net ease money, what that net ease money was bringing, and they said that's gonna be ours. Like we need to own that. That's gonna be the wave. That they're making a game without Activision cutting in at all. See, everyone's like brings up likes to bring up the fact that every there was this assumption that Activision is the reason why Bungie, uh Destiny Two sucked. That's why I think part one sucked. I think part two was a mix of like them having to create microtransactions uh, for Activision and and them learning how to do it right. And now and then taking that knowledge, whatever their third game now will be, because they've only made two franchises, Halo and Destiny. Um, so now I feel like for their third franchise, you know, now you have all the know-how from making a a, a a games as a service game what can they think of from the ground up you know what i mean like lore you know uh play style whatever now you can do that from the ground up because now you know what players want you have all the data now now you know what keeps them coming back it's gonna you know maybe now their engine will be better because you'll have crazier because to me it's like like even with call of duty like i don't mind the reason i spend money in fortnite and I admit, you know, I'll buy the battle pass. It's because when you buy a skin, it feels like you paid for something very to make you look vastly different. Mm-hmm. Whereas you, mm-hmm. you, when you buy something in Call of Duty, it's like it'll be like a change of color or some extra streak on their face, or there's barely anything that's that different. They have some things like you know they finally had like Rambo and a few other things that were like really really different. But for the most part, I'm like. Eh, these these don't look that cool. I want like gold and flames, and I want to feel like like you know what I mean. Like I want to f- Bruno Mars, <laughs> right? Like, 
or like Final <laughs> Fantasy. That Final Fantasy now is all about the glamour system, you know, like because your gear doesn't matter. You change gear all the time, so it's like it's just about how cool can I look while maintaining my stats. Yes. You know, like I want to take a shirt from here and pants and shoes and, you know, being able to swap out. That's the type of engine these games need. Make it where I can make my arms look different from my chest, look different from my legs, from my feet, my mass. Like, let me be able to mix and match these things up. People love that shit. You give them. A, yes, exactly. <laughs> make a hyper customizable game with super addictive gameplay. And you have that's a recipe for fucking success that's all you need and i know that's easier said than done i'm just saying that's the recipe uh addictive gameplay with soup being able to highly customize these and the fortnite technique where you give away a lot of shit give make people feel good for just playing the fucking game or if i buy the battle pass make me feel good for getting to put something cool on there so that i i keep coming back and paying that ten dollars hey and maybe now I'll, I'll pay a couple extra bucks because i play the game so much and i like it so much which we've already done we've put so many hours into fortnite that's like you know what i'll spend that extra five dollars or ten dollars i'll buy that skin or i'll buy some v bucks or whatever because i'm enjoying myself exactly we have fun we we us personally we play with the kids so we'll spend a little bit on the a few v bucks on the the cool little funny emotes just to troll each other in the game you know and just be silly exactly and, and, and the and dances exactly the dances are like yeah. the, my favorite thing i don't really care that much about the skins as much as i care about the dances yeah you know and i i'm like again that's what makes those games fun and i feel like that's that's pretty much the biggest part right there that's that's what sony needs games like that where you can customize your characters customize you know the experience so and then and then reward people for coming back like mm -hmm. have good faith in in the in the players and stop looking at them as a burden you know like you're looking at your free players as a burden no you're keeping the game fun for your paying players that's the they you know if anything you should be that's why you should be giving rewards out to the players who don't spend money because they're keeping the game fun and people coming back because it doesn't feel like a dead game you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's always like yeah. that's that's what we need here you know so yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. You know, I don't want to keep going, but like, you know, I guess the last thing I say is just like, I just hope for some good games. You know, I just and I hope that the that oh, the yeah. games as a service strategy isn't only microtransactions, microtransactions. Like, give me episodic content. Maybe make a game where you're buying new episodes. Like, maybe they can change it up a little bit and think of some new techniques to monetize while, you know, set. That's why I'm like, that's a lot of games. So maybe there there's something. It's uh, you know, maybe hearing it sounds crazy, but I'm I'm an optimist, you know. So I I'm 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 hoping for best case scenario. You know, I know that's not gonna happen. I know there's gonna be some garbage that comes out. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be disappointed <laughs> by by some of the stuff that comes out. But I'm hopeful for the two three bangers out of that ten that'll be like, oh shit, I was not expecting that. Or you know, I'm hoping for that. It's still mm -hmm. five years away. We still got some time. So no, there's definitely plenty of time to see. Then hopefully. I mean, at the end of the day, Sony Sony will be Sony, right? So whatever comes out that's trash, they're going to drop it like they dropped the Vita. Sad. I know. <laughs> that had potential. I'm sorry. No, nah, it's true. But I love my Vita. But uh, hopefully they, they'll think of some great things. And with the 10 games, maybe they'll think of 10, like a vast range of of genres to, to really put that effort into. Maybe they'll have a battle royale, then a single exploration game or so. I don't know, whatever. They, they've got the, the people, they've got the, the resources, they've got the, the brains, they can, they can do it. I just look forward to it and that quality because it's freaking Sony with all this you, stuff. Yeah. You just, you, you hit it right on the nose. You just, you said it right there, the, the, the resources. So hopefully that they'll bring their teams in, they'll bring the, the technology that they have and you'll see high, big budget games as a service games you know what yeah. i mean like not just uh, call of duty i guess would be one but call of duty is a quality the core gameplay is typically quality typically mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you know like like i know i know that 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 vanguard is not the greatest but at the end of the day typically you're getting a pretty high quality shooter mm -hmm. and it's one of the only high quality shooters that are still successful to this day because the gameplay the sound the way they do things has money put into it even if you don't like the game there's a lot of money being put into those games even if you don't care about call yeah. of duty so that's what i'm yeah. hoping for like maybe we get stuff that they, they sink some money into and you know and so we're getting these high quality next gen only like you know live service games that you know like i said there's a lot they have a lot of stuff that they can do so 
Hope you know I'm I'm hope I don't care about live service games. Like I said, I would I wish that they would stay with single player games and experiences. But if, since this is gonna happen anyway, hopefully there's stuff that's like like I said that's actually fun to engage with. You know, mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll see that. But um, yeah, I think we spoke enough. Is there any uh, anything you want to add to this? Oh, I I know you had mentioned you wanted to talk about Pokemon. Oh, that's right. Oh, uh, I mean, not a whole lot. So, like, you know, it's a pretty, like, kind of. Uh, like the biggest time. thing about Pokemon that I just want to mention is just the whole fact that that Arceus is really interesting. I I I've, I've been playing it and it is fun and I like you know what they what they did with the battle system and and but the biggest the one thing that really broke my heart I have to say is you there's absolutely no PVP in this game and I'm so surprised I don't hear more controversy around that like I'm because how am I supposed to beat you in Pokemon if I can't play against you exactly <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we no I, I in the po- in Pokemon, like, like how- it was always something to look forward to. Every time we got the games, especially like Diamond and Pearl. Okay, I got Diamond, you got Pearl, this and that, and guys Ruby and Sapphire. And it's like, okay, I'm gonna build up my Pokemon. Which one? Which starter are you getting? I'm getting this one. Okay, so I'll see you in like in like two weeks, and we're gonna battle. You know, but we can't even do that now. Exactly. So, so I'm like, I'm I'm so disappointed by that. I think it's such a such a missed opportunity. It feels very rushed, like that, you know, that they just try to get this game out, single player game out, and that's it. I didn't know it was going to be a single player adventure. I wish it would have been said from the beginning, like, you know, Pokemon Arceus, a single Legends of Arceus, Arceus, uh, 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 a single player journey or something like. You know what I mean? Like, like, like then I would have been like, fine. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I don't know. I like battling. I, I look forward to beating the game so that I can start building my Pokemon, get a good team, and start battling. That's usually yeah. what I like to do. And if there's no opportunity for that, especially with this new battle system, the you know, the new camera angles and the way it looks now, and you could run around. I just thought, like, hey, could I run around like you if we play against each other? But no. Nope. Right? That would have been so funny. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, run to each other in the battlefield. <laughs> Yeah, like I don't know. It's just such a missed opportunity. I, I'm I'm really upset about that. Like that's one thing that I'm like, damn, fucking Nintendo. I know you. You also usually rival Freak. rival against uh, Nicholas. Right. I was telling him to get it, and then I was like, oh wait, I don't know if you haven't bought it. I don't know if you want it. Make sure you. You know, I told them the game. I told him the core gameplay is still really interesting. I told him it's worth the experience, but that's all it is. It's a single player experience. You can do some trading online, but that's it. You're not you're not fighting friends. Or, or strangers. So, like I said, I think and it's because it takes place in the same world as Diamond and Pearl. So, they probably just said, if you want to battle, go battle in that game. You know, and I think that's yeah. why, you know, it's like they didn't make two battle battler games, you know. I know. That's disappointing, though. Unless they come up with, like, something like they did with um, Animal Crossing. How they have the home decorating thing and then that'll be part of the the. Uh, Plus subscription. Oh, that's right. Like DLC. That's what I have Unless a feeling is going to happen. Like that. They're, they're pulling a Ubisoft. <laughs> like that's... that's like here's the game. <laughs> Download this later. <laughs> exactly. Like they, like they gave half a game now. Maybe you'll get more later. I don't know. Who knows? I just hope they keep that system for the next major mainline series. It's like if this is just like a testing ground for that, then hopefully a mainline series will keep this. And keep some mm-hmm. of the tone too. I like the tone. I like this is a, if it's a, it's a darker tone. It's more you can tell yeah. it's older. The main character's fifteen years old. They make sure they even say that. So it feels like the game is for teenagers, you know, and up, you know, which is like the the the, you know, the as mature as they're gonna get. That it's good for teenagers and uh, to adults instead of eight year olds to to adults, you know. So yeah, the last one was a bit cheesy ish. Yeah. Oh, Sword and Shield. Ugh, I couldn't stand how cheesy that shit was. It was a, it was a. It was grueling. Your, even your rival was like, oh, you're, let's I know, like, battle. my rival, but we're friends. Oh, no, like, get, get out, out of here. here. <laughs> let's fight. Like, they made you hate him for the wrong reasons, you know? It's like, I just want to <laughs> destroy you. And then it's like, he's so positive that when you destroy him, it's like, it's almost embarrassing. Like, sorry, bro. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's the point of... When you're competitive, it's I think it's a little more fun because it just makes it like you know it makes it fun to like talk crap. But when you're just like, oh, we're friends. Oh, you know what? I lost, but it's okay. It's like, uh, all right, bro. You do you. <laughs> but anyway, but um, 
but yeah, uh, but that's it. I don't think there's much. There, there wasn't much more to that. I want to say. I think it was. Oh, the professor looks like games over here. <laughs> oh, that's true. Um, that's the only thing I like about it that it looks that I can cosplay as the as the professor. <laughs> I, I, I need to do that. Yes, we're working on that. We have. To. We're gonna get you a suit and everything. You could probably knit that hat for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. I all right. I I'll, I'll 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 we got it. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll work on it. Yes. But um. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it from us. Um, you know, if you're not a, again, you know, if you made it this far, thank you so much for everybody who pay, who's been listening and definitely again give us a follow or, or rate the the episode on um Spotify or Apple or give us a like on the YouTube channel. I really appreciate. I would really appreciate that as well. And leave some comments on the YouTube channel if you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube. You know, leave a leave a little comment. Say what up to me. Say you know, say hi to Pfeffer and uh, yeah, make sure. Oh, your your thoughts on uh, the whole Sony thing too. You can see like if there's anything that you agreed with us on or that disagree. Uh, throw that all in the comments. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to thank everybody again for listening, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.